Hello everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today we will be discussing about array versus linked list. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So if you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for the latest technological advancements, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now, without any further delay, let's get started with the agenda for today's discussion. We will start this discussion with a brief understanding of array in data structure, following which we will deal with linked list in data structure. And finally, we will cover the comparison between array and linked list based on different parameters. I hope the agenda is clear for today's session. Now, let's get started with our first topic, which is array in data structure. Basically, an array is a data structure that contains homogeneous elements. What I mean by that is an array will only store the elements having the same data type. Additionally, the memory location in the case of arrays is static and contiguous. That means a declaration of an array must be made at compile time. The command that we use to declare an array in data structure consists of three fields. The first one is data type. The second one is name of an array and the third one is its size. For example, int array 5. Further, if you want to pass some values into an array, you can pass the list of elements as shown. Once we do that, an array structure gets created with the data elements at contiguous memory locations. The next important property of an array conveys that the elements of a created array can be accessed using the indexes of data elements. For example, consider this array. It consists of five data elements. And if we want to return the element at index 0 to the console, then we can use the command printf percentage of d array 0, which will return the element at index 0, that is 4. On that note, let's discuss a few essential properties of linked list as well. The linked list is a collection of data elements that we call nodes. These nodes are stored at non-contiguous locations in memory. Additionally, each node contains two fields, one to store data and another to store the address to the next node or the reference node to the next node. Let's assume that nodes in this figure are at addresses 200, 400, 500 respectively. I have filled these addresses in address fields as well. The identity of the linked list that we always keep with us is the address of the head node. We often name a pointer or reference variable at which we store this address as head. And as the definition of a linked list says, the linked list is a dynamic data structure whose size can be changed at runtime. That means we can either decrease or increase the size of the linked list at any instance in our program. For increasing the size of linked list, we use the malloc function in C programming language. malloc is a library function that allocates a block of memory on the heap. The program accesses this block of memory via a pointer that malloc returns. Further, when the memory is no longer needed, the pointer gets passed to the free function in C in order to deallocate the memory provided by the malloc function. The function free must be called explicitly in order to do that. If you want to understand the implementation of a linked list or any of its functionalities, we suggest you go through our video on the linked list in data structure. It might help you grab a better understanding of linked list. In this video, we are going to stick to the comparison between these two data structures and analyze which one is most favorable in different conditions. Having said that, let's get started with the comparison between array and linked list. The first parameter that we want to talk about is the cost of accessing an element. Irrespective of the size of an array, it takes constant time to access an element in the array. And this is because an array is stored as one contiguous block of memory. So if we know the starting address or the base address of this block of memory, we can traverse the whole array to access the element that we want. So let us say what we have here is an integer array and the base addresses for this is 200. That means the first byte in this block is at address 200. Further, if we want to calculate the address of an element at index i, 
then it will be equal to 200 plus i into the size of an integer in bytes. And as we know, the size of an integer is typically 4 bytes. Hence, it will be 200 plus 4 into i, which means knowing the addresses of an element in an array is the only calculation part our compiler will need to perform. That is why accessing elements in an array costs us constant time. This constant time is also represented as big O of 1 in terms of average case complexity notation. And in the case of linked list, we have multiple blocks of memory at different addresses, out of which our compiler just remembers the head node using the pointer variable. So in order to read any element out of this linked list, we will have to traverse all the elements until the element that we are looking for gets found. Due to this, the average case complexity for accessing an element in a linked list is big O of n. Now, the second parameter that we want to talk about is memory usage. In the case of an array, we need to declare its size at the compile time, which means we will have to know the size of an array before even creating it. Hence, to avoid an overflow error, what we typically do is, we create a large enough array to store all the elements. For example, in this particular case, we have only three elements to store, but we create an array with size 5 to remove overflow error. While we achieve to do that, we waste 8 bytes of memory as we have two empty fields in our array. Meanwhile, in the case of a linked list, we do not lose any memory due to its dynamic nature. Even if we use extra memory space, we can empty it at any time using the free function in the C programming language. The only factor that utilizes extra memory in case of a linked list is pointers. However, it remains the best solution when it comes to memory management. Another point with memory allocation that I want to discuss with you guys is that sometimes when we create an exceptionally large array, maybe memory may not be available as one large block. This problem that we have with arrays is also called as memory fragmentation problem. But if we use a linked list, the memory will be available as multiple small blocks. So, for memory management, linked list is far better than array. Now, the third parameter that we will talk about is the cost of inserting an element at the beginning. Remember, when we talk about arrays here, we are also talking about the possible use of an array as a dynamic list. Well, for insertion at the beginning of a dynamic list, we will have to swap the locations of the element at current positions. The complexity for this swapping operation will be big O of n itself. Meanwhile, the complexity to insert an element at the zeroth index will be big O of 1. Hence, the overall complexity for this insertion will become big O of 1 into n, which is big O of n. For the insertion at the beginning of a linked list, we need a constant time because our compiler just remembers the address of the head node and inserting a new node does not require any extensive computation. Thus, the complexity of insertion at the beginning of a linked list is big O of 1. Next up is the cost of inserting an element at the end. For this insertion to happen in the array, we will face big O of 1 time complexity as arrays need constant time to access any of their indexes. For example, in this representation of an array, inserting an element at index 4 will just cost us big O of 1. Meanwhile, in the case of a linked list, this operation is comparatively costlier than arrays. For instance, consider this structure as a linked list and we want to insert an element at the end of this linked list. So to do that, we will need to traverse the whole linked list until we reach the tail node. Once we get there, the reference part of the previous tail node gets linked to the new node, and the element gets inserted. But the traversal for this operation cost us big O of small n itself. Also, the insertion for a given ith index cost us big O of big n in the case of both data structures. The next parameter that we will talk about is a deletion in the case of dynamic array and linked list. The complexity for deletion at front and the ith index cost us big O of small n, whereas the complexity for deletion at the end of the dynamic array remains mysterious. By that, what I mean is the complexity for insertion in a dynamic list is dependent on the programming paradigm. For example, it is big O of 1 for Java and big O of n for C and C++. Whereas there is no such confusion for linked lists even though it is also a dynamic data structure. 
the time complexity of deletion at the start of a linked list is big O of 1, whereas it is big O of small n in the other two instances. Now, let's also discuss deletion in a static array. For static arrays, the deletion at the end cost us big O of 1, and in contrast to that, the other two scenarios cost us big O of n due to the swapping activity that we have discussed earlier. The last parameter that we are going to talk about is the ease of implementation. An array is comparatively easier to implement than the linked list as it only requires a few lines of code. But arrays take more time to execute operations such as insertion and deletion, whereas linked lists are quicker to perform these operations like insertion and deletion. The only difficulty we have in the case of linked list is that its execution is dependent on the programming environment. In the case of C and C++, linked lists are more prone to errors like segmentation fault and memory leaks. That is why working with linked lists necessitates caution. Whereas arrays are more user-friendly and errorless for their coding implementations. Having said that, let's have a look at which data structure to use in different conditions. As we have seen earlier, insertion and deletion in linked lists can be achieved in constant time. Thus, when you require your application to handle data insertion and removal at a rapid speed, a linked list is the way to go. Whereas, if you want to traverse your list faster, arrays are preferred over linked lists. Next up is size declaration. When you are clear about the number of items in your list, an array is the suitable data structure for you. Otherwise, if you aren't familiar with the number of items in your list, Linked list will be the better option for you as with arrays, you may need to redeclare and copy memory if the array grows too big. Next is accessing an element. If you want to access any element by its index in your program, then array will be the ideal option for you. Because in the case of a linked list, you will need to traverse the whole list from its head node for each insertion, which is not a good practice due to higher complexity. Insertion is the last scenario on our list. If you want to insert elements at the end of a list, an array is the ideal option because it takes constant time. And if you wish to insert elements in the middle of the list, linked list will be the best alternative. So this is all about array versus linked list. I hope this video was informative and interesting. If you have any queries regarding this topic, do let us know in the comment section below and we will get back to you. Thank you so much for being here and do watch out for more videos from us. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.